Okay, so um, we're gonna learn about Vue. And Vue is this really, really, really cool way that you can write websites. And you don't need to think about Vue from the perspective of like just interactive web apps. You can use Vue for interactive web apps, but you can also use it to write websites, which is like a really interesting idea. Um, like here's an example, right? So earlier we made this, which is um, actually just HTML and CSS. The thing is, if we turn on the CSS, by the way, if I'm talking too fast, just let me know. If we turn on the CSS debugger, which will insert some global CSS rules, uh, you'll see that this is just like a whole bunch of paragraphs, like right next to each other using CSS grid. Now the thing is, if I asked you to go make this yourself, you would, I mean the thing is if you didn't know about Vue and you didn't know about these frameworks, you might have to use JavaScript because typing in these paragraphs yourselves would be sort of insane. Compound that with the fact that each one of them has a random font size and a random emoji. Um, that creates an enormous amount of complexity to do by hand and to also sort of do it in a way that feels random. So <clears throat> the point is, let's look at the code for that in view, right? So, so we're going to come back to this, this simple example in a sec, but this is what we did earlier. So this, this is going to go up online too. Um, this is all of the CSS. This is all of the markup. Let me, this, because it's 720, let me, let me like make this real big. Right, so, so this is all of the CSS. It's like, what is that, 25? Yeah, it's like 20 lines, 25 lines. This is all the markup. And then we have a bit of JavaScript, but the thing is we were trying to make the JavaScript very nice and readable, which is very different than just like writing it quickly and getting it done. So we have like some comments, we've got it nicely organized. Um, so the JavaScript, we definitely sort of put a lot of care into it. <clears throat> but the point is, that even something like this, like it doesn't have to be a website, it could be art that you turn into a PNG and you like load it as the art for your header. Um, you can do that with Vue, right? So like Vue is actually for me, I don't look at Vue as like, hmm, it's like, it's like, I don't look at it and compare it against like Angular, I don't compare it against React, beside the fact that I haven't used those very much, I actually compare it to like HTML or CSS, like for me, it's a building block. It's as intuitive for me as the idea of using JavaScript, except that it's actually um, nicer than JavaScript, even though, I mean, it is JavaScript, but the reason that it's nice to use as sort of almost like a replacement for JavaScript, it tells you how to write your code, it tells you sort of, uh, like it's, how do I explain this? It like, it organizes your JavaScript in a way that you are sort of forced to write good code. It's a nice sort of side effect that happens when you use really well thought out, well, well documented and designed programming languages. So like, if you're learning programming from scratch, I would say learn Go, right? Golang, oops, golang.org, because this programming language is very easy, it's very simple, and it also teaches you how to um, write like how to program. It actually teaches you, not like the language itself, it teaches you how to program. What are good programming practices? You don't get so, like you don't get stuck into a bad language and then not also learn programming, which would be like a very, very bad combination. So so Vue will teach you JavaScript. Vue will teach you how to write HTML and CSS. And it's really powerful because you can do things that are like 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 intangibly more complicated, like this example. Hey, Nick, welcome back. So, so yeah, so like, okay, we talked about this, and if you wanna learn how to do this, I'll put the video online. Basically, it's, it's not that much. Um, I, let me just paste in the, the code pen for you, uh, here. Um, Cause this is sort of, a, this is like, it's not hello world, but it's also not like a big complicated web app. Um, but the point is that Vue will make your life, like the quality of your life will substantially increase as a result of learning Vue if like developing web in any way is sort of like important to you. Okay, so let me paste this link in the chat. I got six people. It's the, like the highest I've had so far is seven, so I'm like shaking. Um, okay, so. So the point is, we can do things that are enormously hard 
or complicated or just not viable with plain HTML and CSS and even JavaScript in the sense that we can organize our code in a way that is friendly and succinct and we can share it to some other view developer and they'll have an expectation about what the app should, like how it should be organized, which is a plus, it's a good thing. Um, so I like that. So here is a simpler example, just before we sort of get into the next thing. Uh, this is very, very, very simple, right? We have like just like six lines of code, the uh, CSS. Um, the markup is literally this, right? And we have title, and I think like Voidifier was saying earlier, this is very similar to Angular. I think Angular uses like a similar syntax. Um, but basically, we're creating like a landing spot for data to arrive. Um, and you can see down here we have view, and then we have our paragraphs, and we're doing this really cool thing. We're iterating over our paragraphs and then just inserting that into the DOM. And like, that's why this is so cool because we can separate that concern, right? We can take all of our data, maybe connect it to a backend, and not even have our data locally on this computer. It could be anywhere. Then we just organize our HTML to sort of paint the data. Instead of us coding the data, we're painting the data uh, sort of automatically. And that's like a really big win for um, web development. Okay, so are you guys ready to start on the next one from scratch, or do you have questions? The, the thing that we're going to learn how to make, I don't know how long it'll take, but we're going to learn how to make this, which is just a very cute interactive web app, and um, we'll see how far we can go. Um, I have some ideas for what we can do if we have extra time, basically meaning before I like pass out, but yeah, if you have questions, now is the time, um, and if you have thoughts or ideas, now is also a good time before we, before we get started. Okay, seems like we're good, so I'll just assume that we're, f yeah, I think we're fine. All right, so like, let's create a, <laughs> yeah, it's cool, right? It's really simple. Um, so, all right, let's get started. We're going to make a thing. So, we're going to give our thing a file. What should we call our thing? Uh, 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 let's be like a little, just do like badass web app, okay? <laughs> Webapp.com. Okay, so I'm naming the file, badass web app, doesn't matter, it's just any.html, right? And here we go. So let me open it up in Chrome. Okay, so we're starting here. Oops. Badass web app dot html. Oh. I can't spell badass. Okay, so we're starting here and we're gonna go to here. Right here, okay. So we're not thinking about view right now. We're not even thinking about CSS. We just need to get our website. And we can copy and paste, but it's not that much code, so I'm just going to do it with you. Um, and if you think that I like should add something, just let me know. We're going to start with the doc type. And I'm using this doc type versus no doc type or a different doc type because having this doc type and this appearance tells the client that we're using HTML5. If we don't have that, then what can happen is we have side effects. If we leave this, then things can just render differently. So, um, like, like be responsible and like use a doc type. Basically, uh, you'll also see this, which is probably fine. And the I don't think the browsers care, but this is like this is the official doc type for HTML5. Okay, so here's our website. We're gonna have a head and a body. Okay, no surprises. Now, optionally. If we wanted to make explicit that this website was going to be in English or some other language, right? Like, I think TH is for Thailand, I'm guessing. But anyway, this is where you would put, like, the abbreviation for a language. But we can just leave that out for now. Okay, cool. So, <coughs> just a couple of things that we need to add. We'll do a meta car set equals UTF-8. So, here we're being explicit. We don't need... 
<clears throat> we don't necessarily need this, but anywhere we use emoji, this is or like or like we like have foreign characters in our text, like with accents. This is definitely necessary. Um, and then we're going to put style. Now we're omitting. <clears throat> sorry about this. We're omitting the like viewport line, the meta viewport, because um, <clears throat> while this could be a mobile, like a mobile website. We're not going to start there because it's going to add some complexity. So for now, we're just going to leave that out. So think of this as like a desktop website. Um, but like, it, I don't think it would be that hard to make it responsive. It's just, I don't want to do too much. Okay, now, I don't know that you've seen this before, but if there's a circumstance where your um, CSS is using like character accents or like emoji, like sometimes you might have like a, like a, like a class and then it has like content, right? If you use something here that is like not ASCII and you're like using like an emoji or like a character with an accent, then this definitely is a good idea too. So we don't need it, but it's just, there's a, it's good to know that both of these um, can be present, right? So for HTML or for CSS. Okay. Okay, so, so almost there. So this is gonna be our CSS. And then, okay, so now let's get into the boilerplate for view, right? So view mounts to, to an element. So like, <clears throat> it's actually sort of confusing. The, the whole website is not a web app, but an element inside of your website would be a web app. And you could actually have like, like in theory, there's like no reason you couldn't have multiple web apps in the same website. So when web apps like became like a thing, if you think about it, um, by the way, if you like, if anyone wants to ask questions, like interrupt me, like that's totally fine. Um, so anyway, when web apps became a thing, I think we had this idea that like web apps replaced websites. But the funny thing is, like, like when you use Vue, you sort of realize that the web app belongs inside of the web app, the the website. The website is not a web app. The website is hosting a web app, which is just like interesting to understand because it, it's different. Uh, okay, so now we're going to mount our, our app to an ID, right? So I'll put this, it could be anything, I'm going to put app, and then close that. So now, depending if we want to load view at the start or the end of the website, we can put the script tag at the top or the bottom. And then you can use, there's a whole bunch of links or like URLs that you can use to load view. Um, the one that I like the most is this one. So unpackage dot com slash view. So you can open this and it's basically going to redirect you to the most recent version of view. So like here's the link. Alright, so if, if the text is not big enough, let's just let me know. So it's going to grab the latest version of view, which is nice because it is so succinct. But one thing that can happen when you do this is if you gets updated and there's any breaking change, then this would not be ideal. So this is fine for learning, but like if you were to ship um, an app or something, you might be better off not using this. Because like say for example, like they just like update view to like view three, it would still use this link. So you just need to be a little mindful. <clears throat> Great, I'm glad that the font size is good. Okay, cool. So we can basically start by putting the script tag. Now the thing is if you'd rather load the view, if you'd rather load view at the beginning, um, this would be fine here or wherever. Uh, because I put the logic for my app I li uh, like at the bottom, I just like having them right next to each other. So it's fine. If you put it at the top or the bottom, I think these days um, you can also do like async at the top so like like if you like with Bulma if you go to the getting started I'll show you what I mean <clears throat> yeah like you'll see this one uh, I'll put it in this is another way to load a script tag so you could do like you could do like this and notice that notice that script defer Defer is basically telling JavaScript to load this at the end of the page. At least I think that's what it's doing. But anyway, we'll put the script at the bottom. All right, so Nick asked, is web... Okay, so Nick asked, hey, Nick, 
Is it Nikita or Nick? I keep calling you Nick. Nick asked, is app equivalent to a website? So you're not talking about web app. You're not talking about web app, you're talking about a mobile app. So um, like are iOS apps and Android apps websites? So uh, the, the short answer is no, and the slightly longer answer is possibly. So like when you're using a native mobile app, you're using um, whatever that company's developers, like their technology stack is. So, Java, uh, so, so Google, like Android, made a decision to use Java as their technology stack. And they're now regretting that, and they're starting to use another language called um, Kotlin. So Kotlin is basically like the Google version of, of, of Apple's Swift, and Apple used to use Objective-C, and then they started using Swift. So they have their own technology stack. They don't necessarily use like HTML or CSS or, or whatever in their apps, but um, a lot of people are sort of tired of like, oh, let me go learn Kotlin, then let me go learn Swift, and then let me go learn HTML and CSS. Like that's sort of insane. So what you can also do alternatively to making a native app is you can use um, you can use like the like the web as your technology stack, and then plug into native APIs, so that basically you're developing a website, you're shipping it as an app, but there's APIs so that you can use um, you can use the hardware like like natively. So there's like different combinations. I guess it really depends on are you going for speed, or are you going for like like breadth, like there's different things to optimize for, um, but Nikita and Nick are the same. Cool. So, like, the point is that, like, with, like, the whole, like, mobile app in the web world, the thing is, like, the, it, it almost doesn't matter if it's a website or an app or, or a mobile app. What you're doing is you're making a user interface, right? So, for me... View makes making user interfaces using the web stack far like more intuitive than I would have imagined. So that's like why I'm doing this because like the sort of enlightenment that you might have from like understanding view is that you can think about building beautiful web uh, beautiful beautiful user interfaces, and the viewer probably they shouldn't be able to tell whether it's a mobile app or a website because. CSS has gotten so good, Vue is so good, right? Like, we're at a point now where we're building user interfaces. We're not necessarily building websites anymore. So that's, sorry, just like a tandem, tangent. Okay, so we're back to here. And then we have our script tag. And so let's, this is where we start. So let's say like const app is equal to new view, right? So in here, this is where I'm going to mount the app to view. So this is where we're making a, a view, right? View E or view. We're making a view or like we're making a web app, right? So we can do element app. Oops. And here is our web app, right? doesn't do anything and it looks terrible, but this is technically a web app um, because we're connecting the JavaScript to the HTML in this sort of way. Now, this is pretty terrible and it's boring, <laughs> so we're going to start to sort of expand on this. So I'm going to go a bit faster now, and uh, you, you guys really should ask questions because I'm going to go faster than I usually do. All right, I'm going to add a use strict to the top so we get some more JavaScript warnings if we start to abuse JavaScript. And then, like, I've already coded this website, but the code was pretty awful. So I want to do it from scratch, and I want to make the code really succinct. So like, let's think about this. Looking at what we did earlier, we basically used a for loop, right? So we can use a for loop again here. So we want to have a for loop repeating like a div thing a whole bunch of times, right? So, so let's try this. Let's do, here, let me get a CSS reset. Oops, uh, it's over here. So I'm gonna grab one line of code, this one, which is a super, super short CSS reset. Ah. Okay. Here, okay. 
Okay, we got our CSS reset and we're good. Okay, turn on the debugger. Yeah, it's working. Okay, so we're gonna make our app full screen. It's gonna be a single page application. So first let's start with a few auxiliary classes. So we do full screen and then just in case I'll do, actually I don't need that. Uh, okay, so we're gonna do width, 100 view width, height, 100 view height. Okay, and then this is full screen. So this is a like a macro that we can use to make sure that our app is displayed full screen, right? So now, oops, I did that earlier. Okay, so now we do full screen. And now our, web, our, our app is, see how it got darker, right? If I got rid of that, the blue would have been lighter. That's because our app was empty here. And then here, our app is occupying the entire page. So that's why the color changes with the debugger. Okay, so inside, we're gonna have like some div, it's gonna do something, and then the div, we're gonna repeat it a whole bunch of times. So we're gonna use the view directive v4, and then an expression. Now we screwed up earlier because we put four also inside of here, and it took us a while to figure out what the problem was. So what we can do is just say like four, like let's do like for one in, uh, how, many, how many do we have? Four, eight, 12. Okay, so for one in, oops, for one in 12, um, just like print out, uh, just like hello world. V4, one in 12, hello world. Okay, so now, right, what happened? Nothing. So, okay, this is important. Um, nothing happened, which is an indicator that we broke something. It's not in, like, Sometimes you'll like do it uh, and like some of the page will be working and some of it's not working. I'm pretty sure this is a case where we broke everything. So that's why nothing is showing. Okay, it's saying like, yo, I got a problem with your, okay, cool. So we can't use a literal here. We need to save it. So I'll just like use X instead. So for X in 12, we're iterating through 12 times. There we go, so we got the hello worlds, okay? So now we're off to a start, but I don't like this design. What I'd much rather do is either use Flexbox or Grid. The thing is, like we could use Flexbox here, but this is a two-dimensional design. It's not a one-dimensional design. Oh, if, if anyone has a question about Flexbox or Grid, go for it. Um, this design is much more Grid-like than, than like, like we could use Flex. Um, I'm just, I like, I don't see... Yeah, let's let's start with grid. If we have some ideas, it's okay, Nick. Don't worry. Do not worry. Let's start with let's start with grid. If you have an idea for how to do this with flex, let me know. But uh, this feels like a grid. Okay, cool. So we're going to add a grid class to our app. So this line, it's not only full screen, it also is a grid. Okay, so now we'll create an auxiliary class for our grid, like this. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking too, actually. I was thinking that like, if we wanted to squeeze this and have it become like a perfect responsive website, um, I could totally see how Flexbox, like, I'm just confused, like, I guess the math isn't that hard. Because um, the width of the boxes would need to be like calc 100 view width divided by like four but it gets weird because of the padding in the margins. So that's why I'd rather start with grid because I don't sort of have to think about that. But I know what you mean. Like, I, it, like it'd be nice if we can like resize this and then instead of getting like all four, it turns into three and then two and then one. Um, but to be totally honest with you, doing that after the fact, I don't think would be that hard because we're just using auxiliary classes. We're just sort of opting in and opting out. We're gonna start here though. Like, Although, that's a good point though, like, we could just make like a follow-up to this and then like properly put in like a meta viewport at the top and then and then like think about how to use this with flux. So I sh I'll think about that because I, I like that. Okay, so for now, we're going to do a 4x3 grid. So we do grid, temp uh, no, let's just use grid template areas. Okay, cool. And it's 4 across and then 3 down, so... 
If you haven't used grid before, it's like freaking magic. Okay, and I think that's it for this class. Um, so we have grid, and then I'll just put a comment that says this is a four by three. That's how I do my CSS comments. Okay, cool. So that's good. And then let's go back to our shitty app <laughs> and see what happens. Yeah, okay. So now we're getting sort of, we're getting somewhere. So let's do two things. Um, let's make sure that the app isn't occupying the full width so we have sort of a margin around it. And then let's also give them a gap in between. That sort of sounds like the same thing, right? Like putting a gap around it and a gap in between is almost the same expression. So let's do a git a git gap. So we do like a um, grid gap. Okay, so we can do like grid gap. Uh, let's do like one rem. How's the stream, by the way? Is it okay? Um, one is a bit small. This feels like it might be two. Two or three, maybe. Okay, great. That's important. Yeah, that like that's like a great. Okay, so cool. So now because we know what the grid gap is, we can go ahead and set the margin to not just be the grid gap, but to be like twice the grid gap. So let's just see what happens. If I did like padding. <coughs> okay, so that would be the same, but I think double would be like even better. Yeah, that like. It's not the same. Uh, let's do three times. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's, oh, that's shit, that's the same. It's identical. Okay, so, so this is interesting, right? Because this is sort of custom code. This is, um, like the code here, it's not very functional. It's, um, have you heard about like imperative versus like functional programming? Oh, great, so the meaning of rem. Really, really good question. Uh, I didn't make it up, it's a real thing. So, so rem is surprisingly, whoops, surprisingly short for root m. Like, like em doesn't stand for anything. Um, like, I, like, I did some research. So in typography, like the, like there, you would describe I think the width of the M character, because the M character is like sort of like a perfect square, you would describe the like the width of an M character depending on what typeface it is, as the M, right? And so for whatever reason, this got like dragged into web design. And so M and REMs are different units you can use to, to express size. So we have EM, which is literally short for M, and we have root M which, well, sorry, we have rem, which is short for root em or, or m, which doesn't mean anything yet. Like that, I haven't told you anything. So let me get into the significance. By default, websites have a font size of 16. So this, okay, so this is like a, a, another way of saying HTML. By putting this here, nothing has changed. Our website is exactly the same in its proportions. If I make this like 20, it gets bigger because all the font size has now increased um, like some very, like it, it's basically, it's increased a bit. So this, whatever this value is, which by default is 16, is equivalent to one REM, right? So what we're talking about is basically multipliers. This would be basically a equivalent to saying, like if this is 16 pixels, whoops, if this is 16 pixels, two REM is equivalent to 32 pixels, and six would be equivalent to calc six times one REM, or like six times 16 pixels. So REMs are, are, are actually pretty significant because if I wanted to do, um, like if I wanted to resize my website and I wanted everything, everything to get smaller, then I can actually override the font size in a media query, which is crazy. So I could say like, when my, when my max width is like 512 pixels, so that this would be like a mobile device, I then there, 
I then there, I there then, I then want to set my roots font size to like 10 pixels, right? So this doesn't matter, this does. And if we do this, <clears throat> so 32, uh, let's do like six times 16, 96. So if I do, right, that would be like the literal. So now nothing should change because we're not using REMs anywhere. We're not using any responsive text. But the second that I change this to 2 REM and 6 REM, then suddenly I've created a relationship with the width of my website with the actual size. And that's because we're using REMs. So REMs are like really awesome units. Um, REM, or sorry, EMs are sort of like they're, they're, they're like nice, but they're not as nice as REMs. Um, if you want, I can explain EMs, but they're sort of like a more complicated, slightly less useful version of REMs, in my opinion. <clears throat> okay, so use 2REM and 6REM. So what I was saying earlier is that like, it's actually sort of annoying because this is very general generic code, but this is very specific code, and I, I sort of don't like mixing it in this like utilitarian class. Yeah, you're welcome, don't worry. Ask more, I mean, it helps, I, I promise it does. Um, so what we can do is let's move this code out of here and just put it as like an inline style. And then, I think we can actually use view to make this better. So like what we can do, Right, that should be the same. Yeah. So what we can do is like, I want to create a relationship here. I want two and six to like, I want that to be more succinct. So, like, well it does, actually I think that's fine. That's pretty succinct as it is. We'll just leave that. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, cool. So now we're back. We have our app and let's look at what we're, what we're gonna build. The shadows and the gradients are pretty simple, but we still need to create like a, like a inside of each div. We need to break it up so we have like div at the top, a div at the bottom. Right, so I'm talking about this section is like maybe one div, this is a second div, and then they both have a centered class, and then the top just has an emoji, and then this one just has text. But the thing is, I want the height of the top div to be like a percent. So I want the top to be like 75 or 60 percent. So we have to figure out how to do that, because I don't, because percent is like usually for width, it's not for height. If you have an idea, let me know. Or I can check my old code, but it's pretty ugly. Okay, so let's go back here and let's make two divs. So we have div for the emoji and we have a div for the box. Okay, cool. Let's get the first value. Oops, this one, this one. And this is actually text, it's not an image, so we can just insert an emoji. Okay, cool. So let's see how this looks. Now the cool thing is, this is being repeated 12 times. Um, so like this in itself almost represents the entire like user interface. I, it, I mean, it looks terrible, but. So let's go ahead and create, so I think we have a center class already, right? No, we don't. So let's create an auxiliary center class. When I say auxiliary, I just mean like a like a utility class. Like it's, I like tend to hate write. I I, I tend to hate writing like imperative CSS. So I much rather like use reusable classes. So this is display flex justify content center align items center. I'm recording, right? Yeah, I'm recording. Okay. So this would be flex, <clears throat> and then this is flex center. Oops. 
Okay, cool. So that's good. So both of these divs are going to center their content, um, both vertically and horizontally, right? So whoops, if we go to here, okay. So now we just need to make sure that their height is like a, a specific percent, right? So I'm trying to remember how I did that before. Because uh, like if I set the height to 100, does that work? What? It does. That was like f way too easy. I thought like the percent unit was based on the width available, not the height available. So maybe I'm just confused about something. Oh, maybe, wait, wait, maybe because the width is bigger than the height. Maybe that, that's exact. I can test this hypothesis. Hang on. I can do 90. Nothing should change if I do 100% or 99%. Uh, here, let me do like this. Okay, it's fine. So yeah, we can use uh, we can use percents here. Let's do like seventy five percent. But then this one's not centered. Oh, because it doesn't have its own height. That's why. Oh, so we just need to make these heights inverses of each other. Okay, so we can do like twenty five percent, and then that should pretty cool. Um, it might be like. This, there's something that feels wrong about this. Like this should be one value. It shouldn't be two values. Um, I'm gonna cheat really quickly and 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 look at how I did this before. Put them in here. So. So so this is what I'm like I'm ashamed of. When I built this the first time, it looked like this. Because <laughs> it was so embarrassing. Because I was still learning view. So I was like using it a little bit, but just sort of copying and pasting everything. Um, but yeah, what we care about is height. So inside I had a container, the top and the bottom one, and then the height was set implicitly, which would have been, is there a class? How did I do that? Oh, I bet I used like grid. Yeah, I used grid item. So I actually used, I know. <laughs> I was so ashamed. But that's like that's part of the inspiration for the screencast because like basically before I made this, I copied and pasted it like 16 times. And I was like, I can't like make a course that uses this, so I have to refactor it. So um, this screencast is really me like doing my homework and going back and cleaning this up. But I'm glad that you can see it and have the same sort of like nightmare feeling because that's how you should feel. Anyway, um, it was a grid inside of a grid, which was a very clever design, and I forgot about it, but that's what we'll do instead. Okay, so so <clears throat> my anxiety about using this here is because if we say 75% somewhere, we shouldn't have to also say 25% somewhere else. That's not, like, that's not good programming practice. Um, not because it's like the, like the repeat yourself, like, it's like, not because of don't repeat yourself, the whole dry acronym, but because if we update it somewhere else, um, if we update it somewhere, it should update automatically. And this, this architecture doesn't fit that. So here's what I did before, and I, I really like this. So we can use um, a grid item. So, so we're going to have a big grid and a small grid. The big grid is controlling this 4x3 design. The small grid is actually... Um, just a vertical grid, and it's going to control uh, basically the the height of sort of the fruit area from the text area. Okay, so this is again like another utility class. So we have grid item, which is display grid. Oops. And then what we can do what we can do is grid template. Um, I always get this confused. We want it to be vertical. So we want, these are, I think it's grid template rows. To be honest, I like screw this up every single time. Uh, okay. And then this is like two by one. The two by, so this is one by two actually. Okay. And then grid template rows. And then we'll just do, um, how did I do it before? Oh. <laughs> 
So I used two values, which is like still cheating, but at least they're like right next to each other, which I will accept. Um, but these are, okay, so this is wrong. These are not both grid items. There's one grid item that has two children. So this would actually be div class grid item. And I shouldn't need to center its children because they're occupying the full height. So I believe that would work. Okay, I seem to have broken something. Their height isn't working. Um, so we have grid item. Is it columns? Okay, so it's definitely not columns. It's definitely rows. But the percent, oops, the percent is not doing anything. So let's try to figure out why. Maybe I need to set the height on the grid item um, like this. Yeah, it works. This feels more complicated than, oh. This feels more complicated than before though. Um, and it depends. Uh, we can have I think I like the way that we did before because now I have CSS. I have imperative CSS in the wrong place. Like imperative CSS should be here, uh, like this stuff. So I'd rather, <clears throat> well, let's keep the code. I'd rather do this. I'd rather like keep this and just like artificially put heights. Um, but it's like good to like experiment and try different techniques because uh, <clears throat> you see the pros, you see the cons. And like, I thought this would have been a pro to do it the other way, but it adds, like I have to add a div, I have to sort of scaffold things differently and that, that's also not sort of the best way to do something. Um, it's always best if you can like <clears throat> more or less keep the structure of your website the same despite whether you have to make a change. And it's sort of like a, it's, a, it's sort of like a clue that something could have been refactored if you have to change the HTML too much. So, uh, okay, so height, top one can be 65, this one can be 35 and we'll put semicolon because we're good citizens. So if you have like one CSS rule, by the way, you totally don't need the semicolon. So like if I have, um, I don't, if I had like this, I don't need the semicolon because it closes. But if you're like copying and pasting code, it's definitely going to be better for you to keep the semicolon. So, okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so now, um, before we get into like the pure CSS of it, I want to get into the view, the view component, right? So earlier, what we did was we had a function that returned a random, uh, we had a function that returned a random astronaut, like a randomly skin toned astronaut, uh, every single time. So this is a completely random function. Here, we're going to do something a little different. We do, like every time we refresh the page, we don't want to have a different set of colors. Like we could, but like I want this to be like a reliable, reusable um, color palette. It'd be much nicer if it's always the same. So that means we're just going to like iterate over an array and we'll sort of get very consistent results. Now, by the way, um, if you if you if you look closely here, I don't know if you can see it. It's very subtle. Um, if I zoom in, I don't, I don't, do you see what happens if I zoom in? I'm not sure. But if you look at the top line, there's two lines right here. They're very soft. The top line is slightly lighter than the dark, the, the bottom line. That's because there's like two divs stacked on top of each other. When you use the CSS debugger, if you have two lines that are the same color, um, it just like looks like one big line, that's good. That means that you don't have, ex that means you don't have extraneous divs. So that's, it's just like, that's good. Um, okay, so let's create an array of both colors and an uh, emoji. So let's start with the colors. So the colors we're using here 
I'm just copying them from Twitter. These are like the, the standard Twitter colors that you can use. By the way, again, like if anyone has questions, ask them. Seriously, it's fine. Or if you just like have like enthusiastic comments, I like that too. Those are the best actually. How are we doing? Okay, we got four. Cool. Okay, so so here we go, right? We have all these values, and let's go ahead and put them as strings, and more specifically, let's put it as an array, um, which means we just need to put this and this. Okay, so now we're gonna start plugging into our view. So the whole point of view, <laughs> this is the extent of our view app. The whole point of view is that you are mounting view to an element, and you are also adding, um, like you are adding data and methods. So the way you can think about this, if you've like ever programmed in a programming language, maybe you have like a struct, right? And you have like a struct with like two coordinates, like x, y, and they're both ints. This is just like an imaginary programming language. Um, and then like, let's say you have like a function that takes, that like, this is like Go now, like this is what Go looks like. Uh, let me, sorry, let me just like do like a really quick Go example so that this makes more sense. I just want to explain what the significance is of um, properties versus methods versus variables versus like functions. So like, let me make this bigger. So like I have funk foo. Love, I love some foo, right? Um, so this is a function, right? Pretty simple. If I have a variable, uh, I'll do like here, I'll do like var my variable equals foo. This is, so this is a variable. I promise this is gonna get more interesting in a second. So this is a variable. This is a function. Uh, let me just put this in here. Okay, so this is a variable. This is a function and a property versus a method. So now we have a struct. So we say like var s is equal to a struct and it's a struct that has x, y, int. And then we'll set x and y to like x is equal to five um, and y is equal to 10. Okay, so doing a couple things here. I have a struct that has two different types of variables that are attached to it. So these are the variables, which you can also call properties then I'm actually initializing the values here. So if I wanted to like, let me refactor this. Uh, let's do like var, let's do, I'm gonna make this a type instead. And then I'll do var s is equal to my struct. Um, then type my struct struct. I think that's, I think that's right. So this would be an instance of my struct. Okay, so here we've defined variable versus a function. Here we're defining a type, which is kind of like an object. <clears throat> kind of, it's, I mean, it's not the same, but it's kind of. And then this type or this struct has its own variables, which we can call properties. So here is our thing. Let me put this in the main. So, okay. So like, if I wanted to give <clears throat> our struct some functionality, I would be attaching a method to it. So I'd take like m my struct anywhere where I have one of these guys. It can have its own foo method. And that's pretty much it. So like basically, um, what sometimes you'll see is like you're calling a function. Like, like you might do like, oops, sorry. Okay, so you might do like foo on the like the value, but you can also do s foo, which is the property being applied to some some struct. So the point is, this is an instance of a property. Sorry, sorry, this is a, is a sorry, I got myself confused. Property. This is an instance of a method. Method, and then these are properties, right? So x and y are the properties, whereas foo, the function being called on s, is the method. OK, 
Okay, so the reason that we talked about that is because that is kind of, kind of a lot how Vue works. This is like the struct, right? This is like my struct, right? And we're going to attach some properties, and we're also going to attach some methods. So the thing is like, this could also, I can't, I don't know if I can type properties here, but it, it's like a better word than, than data in this case. So anyway, this mapping is very similar to, to this mapping, where I'm like defining how it works, I'm defining some properties, and then I can initialize it and use it. So this is pretty much how Vue works. Okay, so let's go to the code, here we go. So our data, we know we're gonna have um, all the colors that we talked about, which was, I think I lost it. I don't know if I saved it anywhere. Uh, I'll just grab it real quick. Uh, it should be in here. Okay, so here are the colors. It looks like Sublime is like trying to give them color, but it's just an error. Uh, okay, this is close-ish. Okay, there we go. Eh. Jesus, okay, let's just like, okay. So we're gonna have an array in JavaScript of these guys. So put them in a string and then I'll do like this and then like this, and then like this. And then, so our data basically will have a property, we'll have a property called colors, which will be an array, just like this. Um, that's fine, but I think I'd rather like, I think I'd rather do this. Now, just to make sure that's actually legal JavaScript, um, let's just do this, because I don't want to get too ahead of myself. Okay, so that won't work, but if I say, is this a legitimate, yeah, that's, a, that's an array. Cool, okay, so our array's fine, syntactically. So now, we have our colors, and we just want to iterate over them, right? So, instead of getting the same color every time, we wanna get a different one. So, what if we just did like the V4? What if we just did for color in colors? So, this is close. Uh, I don't know if it worked. So, for color in colors, and then this should be, Color, let's see if this works. Kind of not really, so I definitely broke something. Uh, let's see if we can figure out what. For color in colors, array v4. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I'm doing something. Line 59. On, oh, oh God, this is so annoying. Look at this. I'm gonna zoom in all the way. We missed a comma. Dun, dun, dun. Because it said, hey, you gave me an unexpected identifier at line 59. 59's here, and there's nothing wrong with this, but that comma basically, like, it, yeah, okay. So let's go back out, and then now, let's see if it's working. Cool, right? So, so our colors are unique now, but the emojis are not. And if you think about it, we want to have not just an array, but we want to map a key and a value. Which means we need to understand how to do that. So let's go back into the developer, the console log, and make sure that we can describe 
that data type in JavaScript without like shooting ourselves in the foot. So like if we do like before like var colors is equal to an array, instead I'm pretty sure we want like an object to do the same the same thing, right? So that would be one way, but there's not enough data. And like we don't want to use two different arrays because it, the, the data should be tightly coupled. Like we could do like var colors and then these could be emojis, but that's not really what I mean we basically want to marry them. Um, so let's go here and we want like, okay, so this is like the key. So something goes here and then like, I don't really know if this is going to work. We're just going to try. And then let's put in some values, make that bigger. Is the stream still okay? Okay, so let's put an emoji here for now. Okay, so unexpected, oh, now I have commas where I shouldn't have them. So let's get rid of that, put this there, oops, oh, okay, let's try this again. Okay, so we're working, um, so colors, now, so basically we have a map, um, <laughs> it's kind of a useless map, let's do like, let's do A, B, C, D, E, F. G, H, I, J, K, oops, J, K. So we just want to make sure this is like useful, right? So now what happens if we say what color is at the key of L, or sorry, okay, K. Okay, cool, so, so now we have an interface to work with. So this is just like raw data. This could be sent to you um, over like an API, right? It, it doesn't have to be here, but the point is it could be. So let's, um, let's, can I grab these emojis? I can't because I did some clever trick to disable that feature, but I bet you I can in like Safari. <clears throat> can I, can I, can I? I can. Okay, so now I just want to separate <laughs> the emoji from the, this looks so cute. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Sorry. And then anything that looks like this, we don't care about it. Okay, cool. So now we have our emojis. And let's go down here. Okay, cool. Oh, did someone comment? Wait, I didn't get that on my phone. Hang on. I want to make sure I get the... It's so weird, I didn't get it on my phone. Okay. Anna said... Yeah, dude, it's like, it really is the same errors. It's the same errors that we had before, too. It's the commas, the semicolons, and like we had like this really, really annoying issue earlier. It was like insane. Um, we had methods, but I typed method, and like it hadn't occurred to me that that was a problem because data is already a sync. Like data is plural, but it's spelled um, without the s, so it's really easy to make this mistake, and the whole application will completely blow up. So there's like tons of like, it's not, it's not a view problem, it's definitely a JavaScript problem. So, yeah. Okay, so we have our colors, and then now we're gonna map the, where'd it go? This one, this one, this one. We're gonna map the emojis. Okay, great. So now we have a valid data type, and we can just, Insert that, and let's do like, so we need to do, okay, so now we have a key and a value. So I don't, I think I know how to do this, I'm not sure, but let's open up the view cheat sheet to make sure we know how to do this. Uh, so we 
you can go to view mastery and then they have a cheat sheet on their website so here is a cheat sheet and they will not give it to you unless you give them your email but I already have okay so in here we're doing a directive that's what the V the V dash like if or like else or for those are directives so here's our directives and the directive we're using is a for loop so we're going to use a for loop that has a key and a value okay so it looks like it'd be fine to do this one so yeah let's do So I keep saying this alternative syntax to, to do for loops. So I just want to take a second to understand it. Um, for each of the items in the item, and then the key is the item's ID. Does that make sense? I'd rather just do this. This makes more sense to me. So for this is it's not actually JavaScript. It's like a it's like a it's like a it's a very, very concise programming language, but it's it's like, it looks like JavaScript, but you can't like, this isn't an expression in JavaScript, so just keep that in mind. So we're gonna do value key, which is so funny, because in Go, it's it's key value, so the, the, the order changes. It's like, it's so funny, it's like navigating in other countries where you have to drive forward, like if you drive on the left or the right side, it's like this, right? The key or the value changes their order depending on the language. Okay, so we're going to do v4 uh, here, key value, no, value key. Um, let's keep this simple, and then let's just say this would be the value. How do we, yeah, yeah, so now we have a pretty good abstraction for how we write this complicated thing. So this would be just the key. That was pretty. That was pretty easy to be honest. Um, so check this out, right? We have our data, which has no HTML, and we have our HTML, which has no data. Um, and the combination is really powerful to do this, because we're not because like this is an interactive, but we still scaffolded a website. Okay, so let's see what's left. Okay, so we have some animations. So this is a hover animation. And then, oh, we need to set the actual color to the value. That's interesting. It's not just a color, it's a gradient. So, let's do that. Okay, so let's start with the text color. I think that'd be easier. Okay, so one of the directive, like one of the view things that we can do is this we can use views data model inside of a special style attribute so like so far we've had style like this but we can put this to like give it superpowers so basically this this the uh, the text color needs to be influenced by the value so um, let's try style let's try style and then we'll say like this so that the actual the actual property is color We're setting the property to the value of value the value wait a minute value is getting uh oh I don't know how to do this because value is not a variable in our view it's a variable that we're creating and that that won't work right Okay, let's put some brackets. That worked. That's sort of surprising. Okay, so we've got the color set, so we just need to set the background in the same sense. So let's go ahead and do this. Since color and background are different lengths, like the actual words, 
put them here because this is the same. It's getting a bit cluttered though, so what I can do is put that there. Um, and then let's put like emoji goes here. And then this <coughs> would be the uh, text. Or a say color. And then, so color, this is background. Oh, wait, did that backwards? This is background, just color. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm gonna take a quick break for just a minute. I think I'm gonna go somewhere else. Um, but I'll be back in just about five minutes. So hang around. 